1945, mankind developed a weapon capable of annihilating our species. Over the decades, we made these agents of destruction more potent, more powerful, more deadly. These weapons changed the world forever. These are their stories. Operation Castle saw the United States test the world's first deliverable thermonuclear weapon. The test device, Shrimp, was significantly smaller than the first ever hydrogen bomb design tested two years prior in November 1952 during test Ivy Mike, codenamed Sausage, nearly seven times lighter at 23,500 pounds, 25% shorter measuring 15 feet, and 64% thinner at four and a half feet wide. Shrimp also possessed the first dry or solid fuel for a hydrogen bomb, lithium deuteride, allowing for much easier storage and delivery when compared to a cryogenic liquid-fueled design like sausage. On the 1st of March 1954, at 6.45 a.m., the shrimp device would detonate during Test Castle Bravo, changing the world forever. Instantly, many realized something had gone horrifically wrong. Personnel observing the blast reported being able to see their bones through their flesh and men aboard U.S. Navy vessels 30 miles away from Ground Zero said the heat was like having a blowtorch scorch their skin. The fireball stretched some four and a half miles wide a second after detonation and could be seen from the Kwajalein Atoll at a distance of over 250 miles. Had anyone been unfortunate enough to be exposed, the thermal pulse would have caused third-degree burns to anyone within 21 miles of the epicenter and ignite any wood, clothes, hair, or skin within 13.6 miles. In fact, the heat from Castle Bravo was so intense that one would need to be almost 46 miles away to avoid suffering any burns. Ascending like an angry god from the ocean, the fireball climbed at 1,000 feet per second, nearly the speed of sound. As it soared into the sky, massive rings and crowns of condensation formed from the intense heat and pressure of the enormous rising column. We soon found ourselves under a large black and orange cloud that seemed to be dropping bright red balls of fire all over the ocean around us, one sailor recounted. I think many of us expected that we were witnessing the end of the world. The mushroom cloud rose to 50,000 feet within a minute, 100,000 feet in three minutes, and 130,000 feet in only six minutes. Only eight minutes after detonation, it would measure 62 miles wide, have a stem 4.34 miles thick, and the bottom of the cloud would be rising through 55,000 feet. Below the ascending maelstrom of death and destruction, Bravo left a massive crater 6,500 feet wide and 250 feet deep. Billions of tons of material were lifted into the atmosphere by the explosion. Pulverized radioactive sand and coral were carried for nearly 300 miles to the east as fallout ash rained on the nearby inhabited islands, possessing 20,000 people. Thus began the worst nuclear test incident in American history. The native peoples of the islands under the Bravo fallout plume were not evacuated for two days as nuclear ash fell upon their homes. Resting just outside of the officially defined danger zone was a small Japanese fishing vessel known as the Daigo Fukuryu Maru, or Lucky Dragon 5. Only 85 miles east of Ground Zero, the ship was not detected by aircraft nor radar in pre-planned sweeps of the area. The boat's fishing master, Yoshio Masaki wrote in his journal that suddenly the boat has been surrounded by a bright light. Such an early dawn is impossible. And nine minutes later, a roaring sound arrives like overlapping avalanches. Bang, 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 bang. An awful sound like the Marshall Islands are sinking as angry waves into the sea. As the fishing crew began to haul in their nets, a white rain descended on the vessel, coating everything, getting into the crew's hair, mouth, and eyes. This was the radioactive fallout from Bravo, and it descended upon the boat for the next five hours, leaving crew members with radiation poisoning symptoms ranging from dizziness to vomiting. It took the Lucky Dragon five almost two weeks to return home, by which time the crew suffered radiation skin burns, hair falling out, bleeding gums, and headaches. The Japanese people had seen these symptoms before, less than nine years prior in the aftermath of the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The Japanese and international press devoted extensive coverage to the incident, and the Japanese people would name the white ash that coated the vessel, crew, and tuna on board as Shino Hai or Death Ash. Every member of the crew was hospitalized, and over the coming months, 
Many of their conditions deteriorated. Low red blood cell and sperm counts, bloody stools, persistent high fevers, diarrhea, and internal bleeding. On September 23, 1954, Kuboyama Aikichi, the boat's chief radio man, died from complications related to acute radiation sickness, becoming the first victim of a hydrogen bomb. Over the coming decades, many of the crew would develop cancers and liver cirrhosis. Diplomatic relations between the U.S. and Japan would bend to the point of nearly breaking. International outrage was severe and never-ending. Anti-nuclear sentiment was at an all-time high. Some in the Japanese government and media would denote the incident as a second Hiroshima. The American government would undertake a cover-up, downplaying both the scale and severity of the fallout Bravo caused. In 1955, nuclear physicist Sir Joseph Rotblat would demonstrate that the official story issued by the U.S. was a lie, that Bravo was a multi-staged weapon, and that the radioactivity of the blast was 1,000 times greater than admitted. What made this significant was that Rotblat wasn't just an anti-nuke scientist, but a physicist who had worked on the Manhattan Project in 1944. How could so much go wrong from a highly controlled test in the middle of the Pacific? Castle Bravo's designed yield was to be 5 megatons yet detonated with 15 megatons of energy, an increase of 300%, a thousand times more powerful than Little Boy, the atomic bomb used on Hiroshima. Bravo was, by far, the single most powerful man-made explosion in history, when the shrimp device became a blinding ball of plasma and radiation hotter than the surface of the sun. The cause of this massive excess energy was later determined to be the composition of the solid fuel, lithium deuteride. The portions of the lithium in the fuel were 60% lithium-7, which was believed to be inert, and 40% lithium-6, the actual fuel for the fusion stage of the bomb. It was believed the lithium-7 would absorb a neutron, become lithium-8, then decay in roughly a second, slow enough that it would be vaporized in the explosion. However, in the nuclear hellfire of a thermonuclear detonation, the lithium-7 instead underwent fission, splitting into tritium, a helium nuclei, and a neutron. This additional tritium present, being a primary fuel of nuclear fusion reaction, and neutrons, which cascades nuclear fission, caused a runaway effect that resulted in the aforementioned 15 megaton yield. The aftermath of Rotblatt's paper, and the political fallout caused by the classified Castle Bravo test, would result in the U.S. admitting to possessing the means to develop, deploy, and deliver high-yield, multi-stage thermonuclear bombs publicly, earn Rotblatt the Nobel Peace Prize in 1955, for efforts to diminish the part played by nuclear arms in international affairs, and in the longer run, to eliminate such arms, and ultimately contribute to the ratification of 1963's Partial Test Ban Treaty between the three nuclear powers at the time, the U.S., USSR, and U.K., banning all atmospheric, ocean, and space tests of nuclear weapons. The shrimp design would go on to become the 18-megaton-capable Mark 21 thermonuclear bomb produced from 1955 to 1956. The legacy of America's unintended, terrifying god of destruction still lingers to this day. The crater the explosion left behind continues to scar the Marshall Islands and can be seen from low Earth orbit, while the horrors of the Lucky Dragon 5 and her crew inspired the original Godzilla film in 1954. Castle Bravo remains the single largest nuclear detonation in American history.